Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another edition of Real Spiritual Talk Radio. I am your host, Lamont Gates, once again, bringing you the world of faith, metaphysicality, and spirituality. Today, my guest had two near-death experiences, one of which was so profound that many of her pressing questions were answered. Joining me today, ladies and gentlemen, is near-death experiencer, Yvonne Sneeden. Yvonne, welcome to Real Spiritual Talk Radio. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. And uh, I'm saying hi to everyone who is going to watch this video. And I do hope you will have the best out of it because that's the reason I do a video. It's not for my own self-gratification, but it's to help everyone who is going to watch or listen to it. Absolutely. And I'm very glad to have you on, Yvonne. Now, I've watched several of your near-death experience accounts, and I heard a lot of your biographical information. For example, I know you're from Belgium. You speak French, English, and probably several other languages. Uh, but what I want to get into prior to your near-death experience is any religious or spiritual belief systems you may have held prior to having your first near-death experience. Uh, yes. So I, when I was 24, I became a, uh, uh, a Christian, if you can say, um, I became born again. <laughs> and, um, so that was my strong faith. I went to Bible college. I, I was a minister as well, uh, in between my jobs. So, um, so yes, my faith was uh, deeply rooted in Christ and in God and in the gospel. So that was my faith. And I understand that you had a particular denomination. You are a charismatic Christian. Is that so? Uh, that's correct. So the charismatic uh, Christian is, uh, um, it, it's actually, we are, you could I relate it to more uh, charismatic is the word. So we, we believe in supernatural things happening in miracles in being you know in uh in believing in in god and christ of course but in all the spiritual gifts that are there for us today as well that we can actually uh you know expect that prayers will be answers and you know the powerful all that charismatic feel uh which was really where i was uh, initially uh, connected to to my faith was that movement and then very positive thinking and um, and he healings and all kind of things like that. Yeah. And I must say, this is probably the first time I had a charismatic Christian on. Most of my <laughs> Christians are actually Catholic or, or of some other denomination. So that's great to have on. Yeah. So with that said, Yvonne, why don't we get into your uh, first near-death experience? But before we do that, what was it that triggered the near-death experience to occur? Yeah. So uh, after a long life of a lot of things happening to me and and uh, emotionally, I was at the end of the rope and uh, I wasn't suicidal. But uh, because of that, I developed uh, arrhythmia. And also simultaneously, I did feel that I was at the end of all the energy of life that I can have. I was not suicidal, but I did feel this is the end for me. Uh, I, I'm going to die. I knew about two weeks before that I was going to die. I felt like every energy of my life has been had been consumed and it was time for me to move on. So it was emotional distress uh, to the highest peak at the same time as uh, developing arrhythmia and having um, to take some medication that were recommended by my cardiologist. Uh, to 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 manage the arrhythmia, but uh, actually, what happened was um, that um, I I always said that I accidentally overdosed because I took the medications when I didn't have a crisis, and the the doctor had said you just take the medication when you feel like you have uh, an, an arrhythmia uh, attack, so just take it. But I took it uh, to prevent it because I was so scared to be back into that type of uh you know you feel like your heart is going to explode and i was afraid that 
it was life threatening. And instead it it slowed down my heart. And at the same time, I was at the end of emotional uh, distress. Uh, IANS, the International Association of Near Death Studies, said that those two elements can can actually lead to a near death experience. And speaking of a near death experience, I know after this happened, you went out of your body. Tell us what happened after this. Yeah, uh, actually, so I took the medication and uh, I said, I want to have a good, and it generally arrhythmias oftentimes happen when you lay down and when you're at night as well. So I said, I want to have a good night. I'm going to take that medication. Uh, and eventually later on, uh, an anesthetist from a Duke uh, confirmed that his medication had actually created um, a heart stop. Uh, the first one, uh, as I was told, was uh, sleep apnea. So my heart stopped beat. Uh, I, start, I stopped breathing, and so eventually went out of my body. So what happened is that the first the first night, uh, what happened is that I was reading in my bed, and suddenly, suddenly I see my lifeless body on my bed, and at the end of uh, my my bed, I see two big beings of light, and uh, they were all in white dress, a uh, long white dress. They both were very glowing. Uh, they emanated light all around them. They had blondish, whitish hair, and uh, they were made of light. So they, they really looked bright. And uh, they were both uh, standing uh, next to each other. They looked at me with complete calm. Uh, and I always say that because a divine, a divine, you could... Uh, I said they looked like they were divine soldiers, divine uh, divine guides, divine escorts. Uh, they were powerful, look, feeling like they were divine soldiers. I cannot say it otherwise because uh, it's like when you are, I always give that example for people to understand. It's like all those uh, president and kings, they always have all those soldiers that are next to them and they are only having one focus the focus of the mission and they don't they are not distracted around that's all they had to do so they were just like that focusing on what they had to do and then they looked at me and in all that power might and calm they said Yvonne it's time to go we are leaving um, I understood that my life on earth was over uh, and that's, uh, it's like a, a curtain that closed behind you. you. You know, you have done something, now it's over, it's closing, and now you're moving forward. I, I felt that uh, everything that happened on earth was just past now, and that I was moving into a new journey, um, into something new, and I didn't feel any fear about that, any, any anxiety. I just felt it was time for me to go to the next step, uh, like every one of us, if we are, uh, uh, you know, in one specific sport, and then suddenly we decide that we want to do, don't do that anymore. We want to be in another a sport or discipline, and we just say, okay, I'm just changing. I'm going to go there. That's the feeling I had. There was no fear. It was, okay, that's that's what I have to do. Yeah, uh, let's move on. And, um, and so they had um, both of them. Uh, we behind them, and that's always a little bit of uh, um, an un unusual experience, especially that I was a born again Christian and uh, there is no other world but the earth uh, and anything that seems a little bit outside the concept of what we are thought is from the devil. So uh, for me, it was really an unexpected uh, behind those amazing being of light. Uh, there was a, a spaceship, uh, a spaceship that I will say a spaceship of light. Uh, and the, it was very, and I always say that, very oval, very sleek, an oval, uh, white, pearly white color. And it was very oval, not, not, it was not like a mothership, it was just a smaller one. Um, I don't know how to say it in feet because I'm from Europe and I calculate in meters. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was, it, it was a spaceship, like you imagine the one white, pearly, like that, and it was open like a shell, uh, just open like that. And 
we proceeded towards it and I was in between them as we proceeded towards the that spaceship and we enter in and I sat in the middle uh, there were only three seats and I sat in the middle and both of them just very focused they sat next to me like like the protector and soldier they sat uh, to protect me they were you know like that's why probably I was in the middle. They were making sure I felt safe. And um, so they sat there and they were kind of tall. Uh, they were tall and slender. And uh, they sat next to me. Um, and when when they did, we closed the, we clo the, the top closed. And um, we thought they, they, the only thing they ever said to me was, Yvonne, we have to go. They didn't talk to me. They were on a mission and that's all they were going to do. Uh, and I didn't have an overwhelming feeling of love from them, but more an overwhelming feeling of power and like a soldier, like power, but divine. I knew that they were coming from God. I knew without a doubt that they were sent by the highest divinity. You can imagine the highest creator uh, you can imagine, because when I was with them, I felt completely safe. I felt like nobody, no one in the entire cosmos and in any dimension could ever attack me or touch me or harm me because they were so powerful. Nothing could happen to me. And that's how I felt when I was uh, with them by my side. So the, the spaceship closed and um, the the one, the being of light to my right, I would say like they were, they had an angelic feeling. So for people to know, they were feeling like angel, angelic feeling. They didn't have wings, but they had the feeling, they had an angelic feeling uh, out of them. And uh, so the one to my right, um, with his left hand, uh, took a handle, there was a handle there, and he actually moved, pulled that handle with his left hand he pulled it, and uh, when he pulled that, we, I, I wasn't to say that, I imagine, I guess there were a window in front of me because I could see the universe, uh, so uh, when uh, he actually pulled it, uh, in one second we crossed the entire universe, so I saw I saw us crossing the the universe, uh, so that's why. Uh, now I never told, I said that to any uh, in general, but I guess there were windows if I saw the universe. So, um, and then we crossed the entire universe, and we arrived in a um, in a very little place with uh, about 20, 25 beings. I'm not sure how many. They were all lined up, and they were so so happy to see me back. Uh, they were all, they were not in white robe. They had clothes that you would think we would have like pants and, and sweaters, uh, but they were made of light. Those beings were made of light. Uh, inside, uh, it was pure light because they were glowing of light all around them. Uh, and uh, they were excited to see me coming home. I felt I was going home. I was finally home I I really really felt that I was waking up from a, a nightmare and that I was finally awake and um and that actually I felt relieved to be that it was not the reality <laughs> I mean that earth that my life on earth was a, like a dream or an experience uh, and but that now I was home and everyone was excited and welcoming me and embracing me. They were all around me. She's here. She's here. She's back. She's back. And I, it was just so nice. The the two beings had disappeared. They were not with me. And when they dropped me, they were not there. The, I was just taken by that group of people, and they were all surrounding me like it's like a, a big celebration for my return. And we just got caught up about what I was doing on earth. They were listening. They were serving me. They were helping me. They were just all ears. And um, that's how we are in heaven. We all are. The other person is the most important in heaven uh, or in uh, outside this world. Uh, the opposite of this earth where everyone, it's various, a very self-centered world, self-centered society. We are pushed we are pushed and brainwashed to to always self-centered and everything is done to to just remember that 
all we want is me, me, me. Uh, uh, all we spend all our life finding things to look beautiful, our hair, the house, the car. Uh, we we just focus all our attention, our career on all that, and we and it and we we miss maybe the most important thing of life, which is learn. We're here to learn how to love and grow in that love. So uh, that was my first experience. I'm not going to go into all the details because I know I want to go to the other one. <laughs> yeah, well, then... thank you very much for that. Before we get into that one, I just have a few follow-up questions. Uh, many near-death experiencers, usually when they come out of their body, they're usually transported through a tunnel or maybe by light. But in this case, you are transported in some sort of vehicle of light. Yes. Uh, and uh, so it can happen. Uh, I have met two people that had near that experiences that had that same uh, type of experience. And um, it can happen. I don't know. I mean, I do believe because I have two sisters and both of them have had near that experiences with the three of us. Uh, they live in Europe. They're still in Europe. And the one of them, the middle one, uh, she also was taken through the through the cosmos, but she was not in a spaceship. She was there's an angel or a being of light that pick her up, a guide, and they crossed together like that. The universe. I don't know why the spaceship. I mean, because this is the last thing I would ever thought. Because in in, in the Christian faith, uh, extraterrestrial things are not not taught or you know or develop or explored so uh, i guess um to make me feel more comfortable maybe uh knowing how sensitive i was uh i don't know i, I have not received the answer and there are various ways obviously to cross over to the other side and i i don't i don't know if there would be considered extraterrestrial because this seems very spiritual something in a spiritual yeah. realm outside of materialism yeah i think it's more like divine uh divine beings uh and i like that you say that because i always tell people the same thing i said i do believe there is a physical cosmos with planets with all kind of situation and planet and worlds and and nebula uh, but then uh, beyond all that, you have the world of of, of light, of, of the creator, of when all of us, all those beings from different places will go home again uh, and the spiritual world. Yeah, that's what I, I believe as well. Now, I understand your second near-death experience was extremely profound and, yeah. and probably more familiar to you than your first near-death experience in terms of theology. So why don't we get into your second near-death experience? First and foremost, how did it start? Well, again, uh, it was within the same month. Uh, I was taking my uh, medication for arrhythmia still. And uh, it was about two or three weeks later. I don't have the dates because I didn't say, oh, I just had an NDE because I didn't even know what NDE was until I joined IANS, the International Association of Near Death Studies. So, um, uh, so about two weeks later, I'm still uh, another time in the afternoon. I'm I'm afraid to. I'm starting to feel kind of odd, so I'm afraid to to have that uh, again. Those that ar arrhythmia attack, and for people that don't know, it's your heart that uh, can beat irregular uh, an irregular beat, but also can beat very very fast and then you the impression it's not gonna stop and then that you might end up dying <laughs> so it's a very scary when it gets to that level and that's what i had so the second one i took the medication again and um and then this one um i was as i was instantly from the moment from being on my sofa reading, I was instantly translated into uh, God's light. Instantly, I didn't feel any transition. I was just immediately uh, in in God's light. And um, some people say, "Well, maybe you should take some, uh, do some uh, uh, hypno hypnotherapy to see if there, there was anything in between." <laughs> but uh, for me, my experience was that I was instantly in God's light, in the divine light, in the Creator light. For anyone who, who use other words, in the light with a with a capital L. And uh, as it was an energy just made of pure, pure love and light. 
So I was in an outside my body, outside this world. There was it. I was in a completely different environment, the divine environment where God resides for me. That's my, and um, over there, I was just a soul, without all the 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 all the the heavy burdens that life had put on us puts on us uh, all the pain, the suffering, the, the anxiety, the, the stress, uh, because I had my uh, arrhythmia as I had moved from Europe to the US and I was in a sad marriage and it didn't work and I had to start e everything all over again in the US without my family or friends or support system. So it, I had a lot, Just be, that's, what, that, that's why I developed arrhythmia as well. Uh, because I was trying to raise my child here in the U.S., uh, starting from scratch, not knowing what products are, the name, the, the healthcare, the banking system, every single thing. It's like being on another planet. Uh, and uh, so that's how I, I just developed. And also I wanted to make sure my daughter uh, had all the chance like any other kids. And so I was working really hard. Um, and, uh, so I'm in that light, all that pain, all the anxiety, all the, the sufferance I was having on earth, it, it was not there anymore. I didn't even think of it. I didn't even remember all that. Uh, all I, I was, was that amazing soul, pure basking inside that incredibly loving and amazing light of God. And, and I, I just, the way I felt was, I felt like I was experiencing the highest peak and level that exists in any dimension of joy and of happiness, of joy, you know, that sensation when we are so happy and so joy, well, it was experiencing it was multiplied by a, a thousand. And I was just, I was in that explosion of joy and happiness. All I was thinking was that I'm, I'm just happy. I'm happy, it's joy, I'm just well. That's all, nothing, nothing was existing beside that feeling of joy inside the light. I felt all that we were connecting. And, uh, and at some point of those, of that, ecstatic moment and of that uh, nirvana moment i don't know how to say it uh that blissful uh, uh, sensation of love and, and joy uh, i felt um a being of light that came and uh, it's a it's a translucent being a very circular face uh and uh just to uh to uh I'm French, so I don't know the word in English, but like like the the shape of the flames, but it is actually light. Two two flame on the side to to describe the arms, and then there are two flames on the on, on the bottom to which represented the legs, and and then the, the body is that. But everything was translucent, and uh, it was just a circle. But I couldn't make up the face. It was just light like that, just those two, and it was just. It was coming towards me and hovering towards me, uh, and then, and then it came above me and it was just, you know, t turning around me and looking at me like, wow, uh, you, it's so uh, feeling the beauty of, of who I was. Uh, that that being was looking at me with marvel and 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 you know, so so much love and. And de and very delicate, one not wanting to 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 harm me or to to be too invasive, just very delicate like that. And looking at me, uh, just and I always give that that picture like a mother when uh, they just gave birth. You know, they look at their newborn baby and they're filled with love as they look at the baby and they they kiss the baby all over uh with so much love that's the feeling i had and that being actually kissed me all over uh and was just holding me and and and, and just just being absolutely completely love and i felt also completely immensely completely loved um and i didn't grow up with my parents uh, so, um, so I had never felt a feeling of being completely loved on earth. 
So uh, this was the most amazing feeling. It was, uh, and I felt protected. I felt held, uh, like you're with me, you're in my arm, I'm, I'm, I, I got you, uh, you're beautiful, you're amazing, I love you so much. And when that feeling was happening, I also had the feeling of, you know, being in that arms, those arms of love, but also of the whole universe and the whole realities behind. I mean, it was just incredible how I felt the immensity of everything around us and with us, um, the whole immensity. And at some point I was downloaded as I was basking in this amazing love. Uh, I felt I was downloaded, this is Jesus. And I could imagine, I, 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 I knew it was Jesus when I was downloaded because the love that he was, he and she, it was, it was a he and a she. It was like the ideal parents. Um, you know, uh, the, the love of a mother and the love of a father was combined into one feeling, one being. And, and that was what I was receiving, the love of ideal parents. And I felt the goodness of Jesus. I felt the love, the kindness the goodness, the gentleness, the affection, the tenderness, uh, every, everything that you can feel uh, that an ideal parents would give you uh, uh, was actually in that embrace that I had with Jesus. So um, uh, after that moment, um, I, um, as we are together, I there's a knowing in the world in the, in heaven there's a knowing that you are going to everything you you don't have to be told what's going to happen you know things immediately as as it is informed to you and i knew that at some point i had to come back to earth so um i asked jesus uh if i asked him a, a few questions but also specifically uh, i was dating somebody on earth and uh, again, uh, the, and I was, um, he wasn't nice to me. Uh, he was mean when he was upset. Uh, you know, there was all that aggressivity. And uh, I asked Jesus, well, if you send me back, I felt like I had to come back. And I said, if you send me back, what, I have, what do I have to do with him? Uh, what I have to do with him? Do I have to stay with him? Or do I have to go? Because in the Christian church, you have to know that the... Uh, People always pray, is it the will of God for everything? Uh, whenever we want to do something, God, is it your will? Is it your will? And specifically, when you're trying to date somebody, uh, you want to know if that's the person that God sends you. And so you are, oh God, is it is it the will of God? Is it the will? So you get extremely stressed about that. <laughs> While in reality, God say, follow your heart and follow what you feel inside go for it just be happy but we we actually put so many um guilt on us and and fear uh that uh, and then then we are surprised that we are not living a life of joy uh, so but uh so i was that person too i had put that on me as well and so i ask well if i have to go back on earth uh, what do i have to do with steve uh, it's not his name. I just took that name. And I'm sorry if anyone listening, it's your name. It doesn't, just a random name. <laughs> and uh, and then what do I have to do with him on earth? And when he said that, when I said that, so from the embrace he was, I was in, he just shifted, moved out and shifted in the air. And uh, he opened a screen, a screen up here next to him. And uh, Jesus, at that moment, was no longer that type of being with the circle. Uh, he, uh, he actually took a more, a, a more solid form of light. He was still a being of light, but a more solid form. And then I could see uh, his robe now. Uh, and so, and starting to see his feature uh, on the face. And then he shifted in the air. That screen was there. And... There were two square, a yes and a no, like in forms, when we feel forms. And um, and then he said, uh, he, he ticked on the no, 
And uh, he said, and then he said, you have to say no. You have to say no. And while he was telling me that, because on uh, over there, it we are not in a linear world. Uh, everything happened can happen at the same time. So why he was telling me that, he was showing me how much love he had for Steve. He was just showing me the love. So he was talking to me, but at the same time loving Steve and, and feeling the same amazement and the same love as he was feeling with me. Uh, there were, love was love. There was no, he had no different feeling for each other, but just amazing equal love. As he was telling me to just to say no, uh, everything was stacked. Uh, instead of linear, the information we were exchanging were stacked. For example, we we talked about several things, but it was all instantly at the same time, and yet I could understand everything that was said. Uh, so it was just amazing. So he came back after that, and he went to my left, and we walked together. We 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 proceeded outside of that light. And as we were walking outside of the light, uh, in front of me was the crystal city or the celestial city, a celestial city or a crystal city. Uh, it was, the buildings were very tall, white, but so shiny that it looks like uh, transparent, like crystal. And uh, I could see that there was a, a sky extremely blue but i didn't see any sun that were brightening that that sky uh and wide avenue very wide road and we were proceeding there and i'm still seeing myself walking very quickly and say i'm going home i'm going home this is home this is home i was so excited i was just couldn't wait to arrive to the crystal city because i was we were going home so imagine we are in the light and then we go into that dimension of it's like almost going through the light and now going to that city. And I was just so happy walking really fast and all my senses were heightened. I was excited. I was happy. Uh, here we always have to refrain and always have to, to look, you know, to control ourselves, not to look too excited, not to look too happy or too sad. We always have to, to try to control ourselves. But in that world, it's freedom, freedom of emotion, freedom of happiness, freedom. You don't have those filtered anymore. You are free to be who you are, you know, without any danger or any feeling unsafe so I, I was just and then and then suddenly as we are walking there um i feel like some somebody comes you know like when you walk in the street and some people are coming so you see them coming and then i saw that and when i turned i saw um a dozen angels uh but they were looking like they were nine or ten years old and they also had that white robe they had like a bronzy face and silverish curly hair up to here, very circular face. And they were walking just like me, excited. Uh, in that world, everything is life and excited and happy. Everything is heightened. And uh, we were all that, you know, here when you're spiritual, uh, you always have to look to be very quiet and and look like you are spiritual and you're not making too much wave because you have so con such a control of yourself because you're so so enlightened you know <laughs> and then in heaven you forget about all that you're just happy and then you're just enjoying your, who you are and uh so and they were excited too and they were walking like that their life and then the, uh, one of them turned and looked at me and they just said okay this is Yvonne normal not a big deal but uh, I still remember seeing him just looking and then just wanting to, and then looking at Jesus next to me, who had taken an even more physical appearance now. Now he, you could tell he was a being uh, like me, but filled with light inside. And uh, I could see the face, the hair. And um, as he was walking to my left, so those angels are to my right walking by, so they looked at Jesus and then that one that looked at Jesus, you know, he has a circular face and suddenly that face become pure light. 
as he looked at Jesus, it just became pure light. And, and the other ones looked too. The light shone their face and they ran into Jesus' arm. Oh, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And uh, they ran into his arms and he took them, every single one of them, into his arm and his arms. And, you know, and, you know every single one could feel individually loved and individually cared. So, uh, and then at that time, um, Jesus told them with the most loving, loving, loving way, Jesus told them, um, this is Yvonne's moment. This is Yvonne's moment. Go back to your mothers. And, uh, and with all that, they didn't feel rejected at all. He, he made sure that as he was giving that message and it's all, everything is happening telepathically. Every communication was happening telepathically. We were not moving our, our mouth or like here on earth. It was all from thought to thought. And um, so he was very inclusive when he said it's Yvonne's moment. And so they went back and then I looked and what I saw was uh, 10 feet high women angels. And those and, and they were just and those two beings were angels because they had wings, uh, while the ones that picked me up and then in my first and the and the beings waiting for me didn't, uh, so that's why I say these ones were angels, and those uh, there were about twelve angels, women, magnificent and all shade of of, of colors were filtering and and the robes were white robes and some shades as well it was all moving like that and they had all of them had hair up down to the knees Every, it was just very long and they were just looking at me with the same purity the same love the same the same love and light than Jesus had when he was communicating with me and they looked at me, all of them, with a lot of reverence. Um, they had a lot of reverence when they were speaking to me with reverence. And and um, they said, Yvonne, you're home. We will never hurt you. We will never harm you. You're one of us said so uh you're home and you know i had had uh it's not the moment here but I had a very difficult childhood and life and and everything so i think that message was so important to be told to me we will never hurt you we'll never harm you you're home and uh when they said that i just felt home and i told jesus i don't want to go back to earth I said, because I knew he wanted to send me, I had to come back to earth. I had that knowing, even though no one had told me that was lingering in, in here. And I said, uh, Jesus, uh, I don't want to go back to earth. Please don't send me back. I said, that planet uh, is a horror, it's a very violent, violent. I said, it's a violent planet. I cannot relate to that planet. I said, uh, pe many, many people are mean. Many people are selfish. Uh, people don't care about others um, for the most part. And and I'm sorry if I say that it's not because I'm I'm judgmental or something. Uh, we have to recognize it's true on Earth. Uh, we are all self-centered. And if there is somebody in the street begging, how many of us will stop and try to talk to that person uh, or give them food or, or give them money, you know, uh, maybe one out of a thousand people. So it is a tough planet. It is a tough planet. Uh, 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 there's a lot of love that's missing in this world. And so I felt I didn't want to come back to that planet, but I didn't have any attachment to earth because when I was with Christ in, in, in heaven, I'll say heaven, that's how I say to, to connect. Um, uh, so when I was in heaven with Christ, with Jesus, I felt like earth was like a random planet. Like if I was talking about Mars or Venus, 
uh, on earth you know i didn't feel oh that's my planet my earth and that's why it's so sad when everybody every country is fighting each other like oh i don't like this country i like this you know oh this race this this political thing everybody's hating on each other on this planet but once we are out of here and we look at it we say why were we doing that it doesn't make any sense because it's all about love we are on earth to learn how to love how to extend ourselves more how to take uh, get out of ourselves and look at others and so i said to jesus i don't like that planet it's too violent people as uh, there's a lot of people and as I, there are a lot of loving people as well i'm not gonna say that i'm i know a lot of m amazing people but in general the planet is tough and uh but i felt like i had no choice i was going to be able to have to go back and i said um i said if you make me go back there i will be beyond beyond exhaustion i still see myself like you know when you say if you have to let me go back that's how i was i'm gonna be beyond exhaustion and that body anyway i can't go back it's broken beyond repair i can't go back there i'm gonna i won't be able to make it and when i said that um uh, i was hoping that jesus would say welcome home uh but instead he kind of shifted in the air again but this time we were transported into a black velvety space peaceful not frightening at all vel that's why i say velvety velvety it was just uh, very peaceful but it was all black and beautifully peaceful and uh at that time jesus expanded and he became as high as half a mile high in that expanse in that black velvety expanse here it was and uh all his being became like um i could still see his feature and his body and everything but it was like um it was like uh light and uh like um i don't know the word in english but it it was like streams of light and of energy you know that was that was making his his body uh it was no longer the small body like looks like a human it was just streams of of energy that was coming pulsating life and and then he looked at me and uh, he said Yvonne I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my power and my my strength I'm going to give you I'm I give you my energy of life because i couldn't couldn't i couldn't feel anymore i couldn't come back i was too exhausted for the journey and so and, and when he said that he actually started to fill me completely with his energy of light and it, it was a huge download of uh sparkling bright white goldish uh sparkling energy that was feeling everything in my body on earth in my spirit i could feel every single bone every single nerve every single cell every single muscle everything that consists my body i could feel i could sense every single every single spark of of that energy feeling every organs to revive me and um and then after that, he came back down. And... You, you had a question about race to him. Yes, which I yes. found very fascinating. Why don't you talk to us about that one? Yes, I had some, uh, some questions. And one of them was, uh, I asked, you know, when I was talking about Earth, I forgot. When I was talking about Earth and, and say that Earth is so violent, um, at the same time, you know, totally detached. But I was aware that when I was on Earth, I had decided to come in a body that is actually um, a, my, a, a colored and a minority in a, in, a, in a mostly white country, whether it's in Europe or in the US. So um, that's the body I had taken because we all 
are beings of light outside the vehicle we all choose to inhabit while we are on earth. We all are the same beings. That's why it's ridiculous to fight against each other for the color of the skin, the race and everything. Because once we leave this earth, we will all be the same beings of light. We have the same energy of light. We look the same. And so I was asking Jesus, looking at that planet uh, earth, and I said, why are people racist on earth? You know, it was a question that I couldn't, I was no longer with the mind of earth. Now was that being of light, looking at a planet and wondering why those people are racist. And then he said very neutrally, it's because of their self-centeredness. And I said, self-centeredness, uh, because you know, the mind would think that somebody would be racist, maybe because of the upbringing, the country they were born in, the area they were born in, uh, trauma that they had, uh, uh, you know, or uh, the, you know, the, the, the way they were brainwashed uh, by, by their family, their parents uh, to be so, uh, or their community. Uh, but I had never thought of self-centeredness. And then Actually, to explain it, how you explain it is that when you're self-centered, everything needs to be reminding you. Everything you are, everything you do, all the people you surround yourself with need to be, uh, you need to be the point of comparison, the point of connection. So uh, you, if you, you want to have people that remind you of you, though, so they have to have the same color, the same upbringing, the same education than you. So it's, again, a self-centeredness thing. Uh, with that said, what was it like coming back to your body after this profound experience? Well, after this profound experience, uh, so the second one, I felt really my body coming back into my, my spirit coming back from all the, the dimension and coming and coming back through my, my head, coming back into my body. Uh, and so, um, you know, I was, I wanted to share to everybody that I'd seen Jesus, uh, you know, all, most of my friends were Christ, for, Christ lovers. And, and, and then I went and so a lot of things changed in me because when I was with Jesus, he, he said he loved everybody. And for me, I always felt like I was that elitic Christian that actually on, Jesus only loved the Christians, only loved us, and everybody else were, were not worth of Jesus' time. But, Jesus, but it, that was never the case. Uh, he explicitly told me that he loved everybody, everybody equally. We all loved equally because we're all created by the same creator. And so for me, going uh, when I was going back to church, to the church I was going to, and I'm not going to criticize Christians because I've seen the most amazing, beautiful beings in church, the most loving people that would give anything they have. Uh, so I've seen those ones, but I've also seen, uh, and we have to say it, also all the hypocrisy that comes. So you have two worlds. You have the one that really, really want to do everything for God and everything for Christ. Uh, and, and then you have those that are more concerned of the religiosity of it, uh, but they never let it in the heart and the compassion. There is no, tr there is no inner transformation. Uh, so, uh, so, so be a Christ follower is following Christ's message of unconditional love for others and non-judgment and healing others when we can. And so for me, when I would go and then I would hear uh, where I was, I'm sure there are many loving church, but where I was, I would hear, the, I went and the pastor would say, and Jesus will come with his rod and, and separate it, the mean, the, the what, and, 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 and he will just cast out and, and I said, and there was so much violence and I had just basked and I had just merged with Jesus in Jesus' love, uh, where he had merged my heart with his heart as one. And then I said, no, 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 Jesus will never do that. Jesus is love, he's unconditional love. Uh, we cannot put ourselves in the place of God and of Christ to say what they would do. You know, we are not them. And, uh, and oftentimes in church, we... 
we put ourselves instead of God and we are saying, oh, that's a sin, that's a sin, that's going to do that. You are going to be going to hell, to hell. I mean, who are us to say that, you know? And, and that changed. So for me, love was more important. And suddenly I started to see everything was magnified and I was starting to see uh, everything through the eyes of unconditional love and of love. And so um, that's what changed in me is that also I started to be more open because now the first one I had been in that spaceship, I had seen that world. Uh, I was just wanting to know more. And I said, God exists in other places, not just on earth. Uh, like we, I was taught that I was born here and then God had created billions of planets just for us to live on earth. And I was, okay, that doesn't make sense anymore. And, uh, you know, things. And then when I was at my first NDE, all those beings said, she's back, which meant I existed before. And that changed also my concept of we are born here. So I existed before. So all those things opened me up to and to look at more and others and and expand my spirit to you know not only uh in my box but open my box yeah that is a very very uh, fascinating and beyond profound near-death experience uh, at both of them but especially your second one uh, Yvonne, I understand that you are a part of uh, some sort of documentary that was on Netflix. What's the title of that? So, yes. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm the co-producer with uh, Robert Neil Marshall of a documentary uh, called Back from the Light. And uh, it is actually... Um, we what we did was uh, it uh, focus uh, that documentary is on Netflix uh, is it's on uh, Amazon sorry it's on Amazon uh, not Netflix it's on Amazon and uh, on Amazon Prime and actually um, it focused on the after effect of a near death experience uh, so we have interviewed we went in people's home and uh, we traveled all over the uh, all over the U.S. and in Europe. And we went in their home to interview the, the near-death experiencer, but also the, the family and friends and see how the people had changed after the near-death experience because we changed completely. I never, I didn't consider myself religious anymore. I consider myself spiritual. Uh, love was the first factor. We are, we are totally changed when we are after. There's a lot of after effects uh, such as... Uh, uh, for physiologically, uh, your you know your energy is shifted, so you can have difficulty with electronics. Um, psychology, psychologically, uh, emotionally, uh, you change. You want to be a better person as well. You cannot handle violent movie, violent, uh, violent music. Everything is on in the you know in the. <laughs> Like you see it through the glass of of love, uh, it's so that, so so many people are lost when they come back. They cannot reintegrate his life, and so we went to sh ask how they change. A lot of couples divorce uh, because uh, when the person comes back from a near death experience, it's another person that they have with them, and so they didn't sign up for that. Uh, as my friend Karen, a, a near death experiencer, says in my documentary, she says. I didn't sign up. My husband didn't sign up for that. You know, he. You have one person, and for example, I knew another friend who was uh, alpha male, and he was, uh, uh, you know, in in pharmaceutical sales. He was making tons of money, and and then he has a he's near that experience, and then he comes and his wife, the big house, a big pool, everything, and then he comes back and he he said to his wife, "I just want to become a nurse. I'm going to go back to school." Of course, that's not what the wife had signed up for her. she wanted that life she didn't want a life suddenly that that may go from 200k to 50k you know what I'm saying? so uh, a lot of change so you can see in the documentary we interview all those people uh, they talk about their experience and especially the after especially the after effect and how they are transformed for the better yeah. say for the better because we become better people most of us yeah, uh, and I think that's exactly what we just heard at the tail end of your near-death experience, how you came back loving more, understanding, for example, Jesus wasn't just about the Christian, but for the entire world, 
yeah. rather the entire world's plural. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. And I, I want to say I'm not trying to preach a church here. I'm, I, I'm. That's why I said I am a. Now I say that I'm a Christ follower, because I follow the teaching of Jesus Christ, which is love your enemy like yourself, give to the poor, feed, visit the prisoner, uh, just just love unconditionally around you, heal people if you can, uh, you know, help them, uh, be selfless. Uh, so that's that's my teaching now. Yvonne, I want to thank you for coming on Real Spiritual Talk Radio and sharing with us your absolutely fascinating account. Thank you so much for inviting me. I mean, uh, this was amazing, an honor. I am really uh, happy we had that time. Sorry if I talk too much like that, but I, I have tons of story. I can go on and on and on. <laughs> and with that said, aren't you writing a book before we go? Yeah, it's a, I'm not going to talk too much about that because it's still in process and I have to get to the end of it and I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But thank well, you. Better to get there than to never even start, I guess. Yeah. Well, once again, Yvonne, thank you for coming on Real Spiritual Talk Radio and sharing with us your absolutely profound and wonderful account. Ladies and gentlemen, Yvonne Sneeden. Bye, everyone. Ha, ha, ha.